We're here today to discuss one of the most intriguing and important events in the field of atrocity studies, what is generally known as Katyn, but was part of a much larger Stalinist and NKVD action uh, directed in killing, in the end, about 22,000 uh, Polish prisoners of war. This horrendous crime remains one of the most painful memories of the Polish nation to this day. Joseph Stalin and his closest aides made a collective decision to exterminate nearly 22,000 officers and representatives of the intelligentsia. In April 1943, news of the finding of graves of the Polish officers by the Germans at Katyn Forest near Smolensk shocked the Western world. The Soviet Union denied the responsibility for perpetrating the crime and the families had to wait 50 years until the truth was acknowledged. I was eight when the um, Katyn massacre happened. So it has been with me for all my life. I never planned to write a book about Katy, but I knew that it is a tremendously strong source of information which hasn't been tackled, especially the British archives. According to historical sources, Already during the Second World War, the British government had no doubts that the cutting crime had been committed by the USSR. Nevertheless, Prime Minister Winston Churchill, for the good of the anti-German coalition, decided not to take action to investigate this matter. The Foreign Office uh, really didn't react uh, at all to this. The British national interest uh, dictated that they should suspend judgment on the issue. Prime Minister Winston Churchill wrote to President Roosevelt in 1943, sending him a report on Katyn. The first of these two papers is a grim, well-written story, but perhaps a little too well-written. Nevertheless, if you have time to read it, it would repay the trouble. I should like to have it back when you have finished, as we are not circulating it officially in any way. In another document to Anthony Eden, Winston Churchill writes about Katyn, all this is merely to ascertain the facts because we should none of us ever speak a word about it. Prime Minister Churchill was very conscious about good relations with Russia, with Stalin, because the brunt of the war effort was on the Red Army. The actual historical truth and the rights and wrongs of the Katyn episode were totally submerged in wider real politic considerations of how the Second World War was fought. What in the Second World War period had been the need to win the war against Nazi Germany, this was replaced subsequently after 1956 by the need to confirm, develop detente. Katyn itself was a problem which uh, was particularly sensitive. The British, in their own internal debates, revolved around the issues identified by Owen O'Malley, uh, the ambassador to the, uh, the government in exile. His two reports are, of course, the centerpiece and the beginning of all the debate uh, between ethics and morality on one hand and real politics on the other. O'Malley's engagement in pursuing the truth on behalf of the Poles based on forensic and botanical evidence was astonishing. The Foreign Office legal advisor, after reading all the reports, declared that the Soviet case is stronger than was first anticipated and calls at any rate for the suspension of judgment on Katy. During the 70s, the Katyn massacre resurfaced as a political issue in Britain and a series of debates in both houses of parliament unraveled. The Polish community in London, supported by representatives of the British establishment, set up an initiative to build a monument commemorating victims of the Katyn massacre. The idea of raising a monument to the dead was conceived by the London Poles, but it was left up to our British friends to negotiate with their government. A committee was formed under the chairmanship of Lord Barnby, Erin Neve, and Lord St. Oswald. In 1976, a 20-foot black granite obelisk 
with large engraving of the year 1940 and words, the conscious of the world cries out for a testimony to the truth, was unveiled at the Gunnersbury Cemetery. A breakthrough in the cutting case occurred on the 13th of April 1990, when the Soviet agency TASS published an official statement finally admitting the responsibility for the murders on behalf of the USSR. When communism collapses, there is an internal debate within Gorbachev's camp. The more radical members license historians to examine the documents, and slowly uh, evidence comes out uh, which forces Gorbachev to admit that Katyn uh, was a Stalinist crime. To this day, none of the perpetrators, commanders or executors, have been punished. It is vital that the young generation know what has happened and learn from it. I think the sole fact that we've been sitting here and discussing this topic for almost two hours and the turnout that we have tonight uh, proved that cutting remains indeed a contemporary um, and an important issue, not only for Poland but for uh, the international community.